Okay, good afternoon. So here's our, our next video for your lab objective, and this is going to be lab objective number 12, which is the Bendix ABS, or anti-lock braking system, ATC, automatic traction control, and EBS, electronic stability control, uh, trainer board. Now you've all seen this in lab. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a real quick <coughs> orientation on some of the parts and components. Then we're going to do some measuring and then we're going to take a break and then we'll get set up again and we'll go into the actual what's called the Bendex ACOM software for the diagnosis. Okay, so this worksheet is going to be posted on Brightspace uh, <coughs> and we'll be working through uh, each of the individual uh, lab objectives through the sheet from start to finish. Okay, so I follow through the video with your worksheet. So for introduction. Uh, this section here, so this is three different boards, okay? So the section here down is basically, here's my engine. These black circles represent the, the steer tires. I have some, and you'll see these, uh, these are my um, wheel speed sensors, speedometers. I have a couple of modulators, and I have a quick release valve right here. Here is my controller. Um, air compressor, dryer, and a couple of front steer air cans. And these are a type 24 air can, same as what was on our steer tires, okay? This section in here, this is would be in our cab. So my yellow and green buttons, you're familiar with them. That's my uh, parking brakes, red for the trailer, which we'll get to shortly, yellow for my tractor unit, my accelerator, my brake, and what we come in and call the Johnson valve, which is on this, typically on the our steering column. This section right here, we'll come back to this. This is my diagnostic port. All right, so that's where I'm going to hook up my uh, comm adapter, my communication adapter, and we're using the Nexic uh, universal adapter. It goes back to a laptop. We'll get to him later. This you obviously won't find in the real world. This is our manifold, which is basically connecting these two boards together. So this board here would be behind the cab to the back of the semi. All right, so again, I have a one drive axle here, and I have another drive axle here. I can see that I have my spring cans here. This is a Type 30. Each one, each axle has a Type 30. I have modulators, and I also have my front service, which is my secondary air tank. I have my rear service, which is my primary air tank. These are all gauged up nicely too, just for demonstration and for diagnostic purposes. I keep walking back. This section here, over to here, this would be a trailer. I can see that I have my glad hands hooked up, and also I have my uh, electrical circuit hooked up for my brakes and turn signals. I have a front axle for my trailer. I have a rear axle for my trailer. I have two service cans. I have my own ABS modulator for the trailer. Um, and air cans, type 30s again, on the back end of both, both axles. On the back side, which you really can see, is all of the electronics is hooked together. So we do have wiring that's going between each of these boards leading all the way back to the ECU, okay? So that's kind of a real brief overview of what we got going on. One issue that we do have that we're not gonna worry about right now is down here is my dryer. I do have some type of a restriction in my dryer. Um, it's always been like that, it came like that. I haven't quite got that figured out yet. So you will note that I have taken these two off the board and I have my air coming in here. So essentially my shop air is taking place of my air compressor, all right? Doesn't affect what we're gonna do for the lab. All right, so we're gonna take a break and then we're gonna get set up and we're gonna start doing some measurements. All right, welcome back. So the first couple of checks we're gonna do is how much air is gonna be used with a brake application. So we're gonna start off, and I'm working through your worksheet, we're gonna start off with our primary tank. We're gonna zoom in on the gauge, and when I, I'll, if you recall, uh, a lot of our tests are done at 60 PSI of application pressure, so I'm going to apply the brake, and Jason's gonna zoom in on this gauge, so you can see how much air we're using. 
Then we'll kind of come up to our front service, which is our secondary circuit. Then we'll go to our trailer. So we're going to start with our primary circuit right now. So I will apply 60 psi of application pressure. And we can see we used up quite a bit of air. So we'll turn this back on. All right, next time we're going, to do, we're going to watch our front service, which is our secondary circuit. This one right here. So it's 60 psi of application pressure. And release. And we'll fill them back up again. Alright, so now we'll come down to the trailer. And our first one will be our number one tank for our trailer, and then we'll go over to our number two tank on the trailer. So, number one tank on the trailer, 60 psi of application pressure, and here we go. And we'll go to the number two tank on the trailer. Okay, let me come with this one. Here. So number two tank. And 60 psi. Okay, we'll take another break and we will come back and do some ma more measuring. All right, so now we're going to do some diagnostics with uh, our ACOM software. Uh, before we get to the, to the laptop, a couple of things I need to show you guys. So this is our diagnostic port. I'm going to have Jason zoom in nice and tight on these two different adapters. So if I look at this adapter right in the center, my pin, I can see that notch right there. And if I look at this one, obviously different pin numbers, there is no notch. The notch, if I look at my diagnostic port, lines up with that notch in my port. One thing that you do not want to do, okay, and I mean this very seriously, some of your diagnostic ports do not have the notch in the port. Do not shave this notch off and plug it in. It can be plugged in but I will assure you that you can smoke the software in the computer, in the laptop. Uh, we had an instructor actually do that. Didn't turn out so good, so we had to replace the laptop, all right? So this gets plugged into our diagnostic port. And as I said, we are using the Nexic uh, USB link. So this is a, a universal adapter, works with a lot of different things. You guys have probably used it with Caterpillar engine, Cummins engines, whatever. So we are going to be using it here. All right, so I'm going to follow back to the laptop. And Jason's going to get situated, and we're going to look at our laptop now. So the laptop is does have dedicated Bendix ACOM software. Uh, we are on version 6.18.5.1. That is the latest and greatest. Okay. So if I look at my software, Right up here is where my ACOM diagnostics icon is. So I can come over here, and maybe I'll get there. All right, we'll give it a couple of seconds to think. It's thinking about it. All right, we are back. <laughs> okay, so this is the first screen that we're going to see. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, you can kind of read through your um, worksheet. The first things you want to do, and this is if you're dealing with any software, with any engine, transmission, whatever, we have to turn on our ignition key so that we can establish a link. You can probably hear that clicking. That is the 
ABS system doing its self-check. So that we've talked about this in class, that when you first, you know, your car, your pickup truck, your semi, whatever, your loader that has ABS on the construction site, when you turn your key on, let the ABS do what it needs to do. 99 times out of 100, if you fire the engine up or just start doing whatever, it's gonna be fine. I have had an instance where I start an engine too quickly and it sent an ABS fault code. All right, so let them do their things. A lot of times you hear that clicking, you might see some gauge sweeps, whatever, okay? So we are now uh, <coughs> in contact. So the next thing we're <coughs> going to do, uh, number five <coughs> on the your worksheet, Band X ACOM Diagnostic Tools number five, did it do a modulator self-check? Yes, it did. So we are going to now click on Detect ECU. I can find, well, this is a touch screen, so we're just going to... We automatically get an error code. We're going to ignore that error code. And we can see now that's going to detect one ECU. All right, and it's finished. You'll note here that I have a selection along the bottom, troubleshooting, options, of course that little stop bar, and launch. The next one we're gonna go to is to launch. It will again search for the ECU. So there we have the Bendex ACOM Diagnostics. There we go. Worked pretty hard to get there. It's still working. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to full screen. Okay, the next question on your worksheet is to record the following. Number seven, product manufacturer, product name, product version. This is kind of critical for any software that you're using. And I've mentioned this at least once in class. If you have a technical issue with a chunk of Caterpillar software or Cummins software or Kenworth or whatever, one of the first things that IT will want to know is some information such as product version, application version, etc. Typically, you can find that and we're going to click on help and it says about. So I click on about, and there we have all the information that IT needs. All right, so we'll pause here just for a little bit so that you guys can write this down. So in order, we have the product manufacturer, so that's Bendex. We have the product name, ACOM uh, EC60 Diagnostics. Then we have the product version. We have the application version, we have the license, and then finally we have the, the diagnostic platform version. So this one at the top, the product version, the version 618.51, that is the latest and greatest. Uh, I occasionally get downloads where I have to update this. I have authority uh, to update onto this particular laptop, okay? All right. So be a good thing that you, when you're working on software, grab your cell phone, take a picture of that so that if you do have to call on your IT help desk, that is the information they're going to need. All right, so let's click out of there. Okay, so we are going to full screen this one. All right. So first thing we're going to do on the very right hand side, right over here, we are going to check for any current DTCs or diagnostic trouble codes.
So, let's full size this. One nice thing about the ACOM software is it gives you a lot of help when it comes to diagnostics. So if I look up here, I can see that I have a stop lamp switch is not detected, and I have a trailer pulse width vo voltage is potentially measured or uh, internal, uh, or excuse me, miswired, I'm trying to read through bifocals, or internal mechanical problem. It gives you a blink code. We talked about blink codes on the dash. There's a button pretty much above the driver's left hand knee that if he puts, pushes that button, he's going to get a blink code. So the blink code 12-1 relates back to these ones. It also gives you the three connectors that's on the ECU. And this is highlighted on this side here. I can see a couple of blues there, one blue there, a red and a blue. So that would indicate what, if I'm going to back probe for diagnostics, what terminals I'd be looking at. So if I kind of scroll down here, I can see that I have quite a bit of diagnostics um, that I can follow through just in order to get this stop land switch and the trailer pulse width voltage um, corrected, all right? So let's go ahead and we'll get out of this one. All right, we're going to click on the configuration tab. So that's this one right here. And I can see a lot of information again on this one. Um, tire size, uh, controllers, <coughs> if I have ATC controllers, anti-lock braking, and I also have a really, really basic and you'll note that our low warning buzzer activated, so that works. So look at the conflag tab and we can full size this one and I can see I've got a lot of information I can do some calibrations. If I look on the right-hand side, I can do some calibrations. I can do some modifications. I really don't want to do any of these unless the software tells me to. All right, so we don't really mess around with those two. Okay, so we're going to close this one. Now we're going to go to component tests, which is this one right here. It gives us a warning. Vehicle must be parked on a level surface with the wheels blocked. I've always told you in class that we never ever assume that we're on a level surface. I've been in a situation where I thought I was on a level surface in a shop, took it out of gear, released the brakes, and the truck started rolling. And that's really not a good feeling. So make sure that you, are, you, had, you have your wheels blocked. Then it says, please keep hands, feet, etc., away from moving parts. To us, that's kind of like a no-brainer, duh. Remember, you're going to be walking, working with some people who may not have the common sense to figure that out, all right? So as well as keeping your hands and feet away from moving parts, please make sure the people around you in the same work area are following the same rules. Okay, we're going to full-size this screen. So if I look on my left-hand side, I can see that I have tests for modulators, lamps, switchers, sanchez, uh, stability, and then the list goes on because like two little arrows here. On the modulators, I have a series, all right? So there is a lot of testing that we can do. Uh, we are not going to do all of the tests. I'm just gonna kind of pick and choose a few of the ones I think you might want to be interested in from each of these tabs. So we'll just pick maybe three out of this line lamp switches, we'll just do a selection of them, all right? So, the first one that we're gonna look at, let's go ahead, the ATC valve, the automatic traction control valve of the drive axle. Um, one thing to be aware of that when I click start, then the software in this laptop takes over the software in the truck. So there are going to be some times where we're going to have brake valves moving, we're going to have uh, brake cans that are actuating. Uh, one test 
does get rather rough. So please pay attention to what you're doing. All right. So let's just go ahead and start the ATC valve test. All right. So we clicked on that. Drive axle, please start to inv invoke the test. So we come over to the left hand or right hand side. We click start. Okay, so through the GoPro, you can see that action going on at our drive axles. And through this one, I can see that we, number one, we started the test. Number two, we did it for 3.5 seconds. We waited for three seconds. We did 3.5 seconds, and that completed our test. All right, so right here on the bottom, it says, did the ECU respond correctly? Well, I'm kind of thinking it did. So we're going to come over and we have a check mark for yes, we have a red for no. So I'm going to click on yes. Now you can hear the modulators going through this self check. One thing you'll get used to after every single test the modulator does a self-check. So that nice little rhythmic uh, noise that you heard, you'll get used to that. All right, so let's pick on another couple. Let's do our drive axle. Let's do our steer axle left modulator. All right, so that would be the driver's side modulator. So we're going to click on that one. And again, it wants us to start... So it's just activating the modulator. And again, it asks us, did the ECU respond correctly? Yes, it did. So we'll click on, yes, it did. Let's do <coughs> one more into this one. So let's do the chuff test. The chuff test is a test that is actually going to put air through the modulators. So again, we'll click on start. And did it do it? Yep. Okay, so for your worksheet, <coughs> for this one we did three tests, and this is number nine on page number two. Uh, first test we did was the ATC valve on the drive axle. The second test was the steer axle left modulator, and then the third was <coughs> the chuff test. All right, so let's look at our lamps. So we have four tests there. We have the ABS warning, ATC warning, um, the, A the trailer ABS, and then the brake lamp. We have switches, diagnostic switch, off-road, brake, uh, stop lamp switch, sensors. Uh, let's do our sensors here real quick. So steer axle right sensor. So let's click on that one. All right, so now we're going to spin the wheel. So I'm going to put my foot on the accelerator, and we'll just kind of see what happens here. Should. So the accelerator, uh, you might be able to see this for the GoPro. My Right front is at 60 miles an hour and is evened out, so we're running at 60 miles an hour, so essentially our wheel is spinning. Okay, 
So, we're going to start the test. The test is complete. Did the ECU respond? Yes, it did. So we'll click we're good. All right, so vehicle is in motion. ECU cannot be reset until the wheel speed is zero. So we're going to apply our brakes. And we're at zero, zero miles an hour. So we'll click OK. Now to go through its little self-check again. Again, you'll get used to this wonderful little rhythmic noise. You'll note here that I have steer axle, left sensor, steer axle, right drive axle, drive axle, additional axle. That would be for my trailer. All right, so any additional axles will be on my trailer end. All right, so stability control, um, steering angle, the yaw angle, lateral accelerometer. So when we talked about this in class, these are some extra sensors that will be on a vehicle or piece of equipment, off highway, on highway, if we do have ATC. So, or stability control as well. So the your ABS system is your basic, all right? You cannot have ATC, you cannot have EBS if you do not have anti-lock brakes. So your steering angle is typically going to be at the somewhere on your steering uh, column. So when you turn the wheel, it's going to rotate the steering angle sensor around. The, your rate is basically a sensor that's going to be in the middle of your piece of equipment or your semi if it's on highway. That is measuring if the vehicle is turning around uh, in a circle, a central position. So it's going to be basically geographically, geographically in the center of your vehicle or piece of equipment. So for example, if I'm going, I'm on a, going into a corner on a semi, it's a little bit icy, and the back end of that semi on the trailer, the power unit, starts to um, I'm making a right hand turn. So instead of just tracking around, it's actually starting to spin out and I'm starting to lose control of the back end of my tractor unit. So that yaw rate will uh, come into effect. This is all done through the ECM, all right? All you're doing is you're maybe panicking a little bit, but the, the, the uh, electronic stability control will take over, control the brakes and possibly the transmission if it's an automatic possibly decelerating the engine, et cetera, okay? Lateral acceleration, that would be if we are uh, dynamiting the brakes or we're hitting the uh, brakes too hard, then the ex lateral acceleration is going to uh, take effect and we'll send information to the ECU. Uh, one thing that we don't have on this truck, if I look at this third from the bottom, airbag pressure. So we don't have air suspension on this truck. Uh, if you did on your truck a piece of equipment, then we could test that as well. Okay, so we'll come along here. Miscellaneous. We can also have uh, engine limiting test. Again, we don't have an engine on this one, so that's not going to happen. We can also do a battery voltage test. So let's just click on that one. We should have... All right, so our voltage right now is 11.55 volts. Test complete, did it respond? So that 11.55 is what is going to the ECU. So that is a few of the many, many tests that can be done, and obviously if we had a regular class, then you would go through every single one of these. So, so the essence of time, we just did a few of them, but it does show you what a, a lot of the diagnostics that we can do with this software. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is our ECU status, and that is going to be, so let's get out of this one here, and we're going to look at our ECU status. So this is also where we want to get some information after we get through a little musical interlude. Jason, can you zoom in on the, the section here? So basically come under here if you can, because I really need this information. That should be good right there. All right, I just had Jason zoom in. Um, so this is number 11 on the last page of your worksheet. So. This is information for just the ECU. Uh, again, I would advise you if you're working a CAT engine or if you're working a Bendix uh, ABS system or in a Fuji transmission, whatever, if it has a controller on it, get your cell phone out and get a picture, okay? That didn't work. So when I look at this, I can see system data model, part number, serial number, software number, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of information going all the way down here, okay? So for your worksheet, our model is an EC60-ADV, so that's advanced. Part number, if I can read that, is K0. Yeah, I really can't read that through my bifocals. Um, then we have our serial number, we have our software number, ECU stored VIN, uh, that's kind of a fictitious number, one, two, three, four, five, six. That VIN would be the uh, VIN of the piece of equipment or the vehicle it is in. Uh, ABS, so it has 6S, 6M, so that means there are six sensors and six modulators. If we do have stability control, we have to have a, a wheel speed sensor, that's the S, at each wheel end and a modulator for each wheel end. ATC control, so automatic traction control, is both brake and engine. So this controller does interact with the engine, all right? Um, stability control, battery voltage, so my battery voltage is down here. So for this one, we're looking at 313.5. We have two active DTCs, and we've already established that. We also have 44 event histories. So every time that <coughs> we get an event, that is logged into the ECM. So if we have continual issues, we can go back, and, or the manufacturer can go back, uh, dealership can go back and look at the event history to find out. Uh, any tattletales of repetitive uh, issues, maybe as a driver issue or an operator issue, okay? So this comes into play with your uh, management of your fleet or your piece of equipment. All right, so I think that we're calling that good. Um, there <coughs> will not be a service report for this one, but I will make the worksheet available through Brightspace and you can go and fill in all the blanks and then you'll just submit that into the Dropbox. All right, we are good, thank you.